Plymouth is out to win you over this year. This year, Plymouth soars high to win you over with the 67 Belvedere. The intermediate-sized car that looks big money, but doesn't cost it. Hey everyone, welcome to Rev It Up with Earl Garnett. I'm your host, Earl Garnett. Welcome to another episode of Rev It Up with Earl Garnett. Today on the show, we have an awesome muscle car. Welcome to the show, Dwayne. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, no problem. Tell yeah. us, what do we got here? Well, it was... Uh... I wasn't sure what kind of car it was actually when I bought it. Uh, I'd never seen a Belvedere before. Yeah. Um, but what caught my eye is basically it had been set up as a race car. Okay. And yeah. it, it looked like it had some attitude and so I was curious to go look at it. Uh, long story short, I said to my wife, say, I, I want to go take a look at this car. Well, what do you need a race car for? And I said, well, <laughs> I'm not going to race. Yeah. I just want to go look at it. So she was a little hesitant. And I talked to my older son, I said, well, let's go up Sunday and we'll take a look at it. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as I heard the car run, I was hooked. I, I made him an offer within you, half an hour. You were buying it. I was buying it. Did you I, clear it with the wife first? No. See? No, no, that's no, how you do it, guys. Not, <laughs> not at all. So um, I wrote him a check for deposit and we get in the truck, go home, and it was pretty quiet for a while between my son. He goes, so how are you going to tell mom? <laughs> I said, I'm not really sure, but I said, I got to go to the bank first thing on Monday and figure out how I'm going to pay for this car now. <laughs> so we got home, I told her, and you know, wasn't quite too happy about it. And so yes. she said, you know, basically, well, as long as it doesn't cost too much. Yeah, yeah. So, Did you take a zero off the cost? When no, you told no, because no. I had the bill of sale. You were no, straight up no, with it. No, no. Uh, to me, to a guy, it's a good deal. Yes. Because it's a car, right? Correct, yes. Did you have to sleep in the garage that night or no? It was pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> I had to make room because I yeah. didn't anticipate bringing it home so quick. So the first night I did bring it home, it was late. I couldn't get the car started. We're trying to get off the trailer. Then I realized none of the lights worked. Okay. Yeah. So I was not familiar with the shifter. So I drove around my neighborhood in first gear yeah. with a loud car and no lights. <laughs> Come around and the air cleaner was off, the hood was off. And I was such a nervous wreck. I thought, what did I get myself into? <laughs> yeah. So I, I put it in the garage and you, you look at your car and going, yeah, I'm not sure how this is going to go. But yeah. eventually, you know, things start to come together. You, you get a little bit done on each time. Yeah. You start to take more pride in it every time you drive it, you know. First couple of years were tough. Things were breaking, things weren't working. Yeah. You know, you don't know, you know, you learn very quickly how to do stuff on your own. I bet, yeah. You know, how to do certain things. I'd never done suspension on an older car, but you learn. Yeah, that's really cool. Because, I mean, cool. either you do it or you have somebody do it yeah, for you and it costs money. money. Yeah. And you know, over the time, and I, like you said, you know, I set, a, set aside a budget each winter, do a free project, mm -hmm. then all summer I drive it and enjoy it. And, wow. and the last two summers I just drive it, enjoy it, park it, and I don't have to worry about it. So Very it's cool. just the fun factor. Yeah, I mean, it, the looks of this car is absolutely stunning. I, I get a lot of compliments, and that wasn't initially the goal. Yeah. I, I just wanted something to have pride in, and I. I got lucky because it was a good car to start with. It just yeah. needed a little TLC a little yeah. and cleaned up. I, I polished it myself, you know, just with learning. And I mean, it still has got some dents and dings, but I, it gives it character. It does. I don't think you I know? would change yeah. anything on it. Like, no. it looks so badass and it, it, cool. It really does. And even standing still and well, a couple of years ago when I decided to change the wheels and tires, well, you don't realize how that's the hardest decision to do. It's like, yeah. I guess it's like the wife said, trying to buy china. Yeah. You don't know which pattern's going to go with your table and yeah, everything. Yeah. So I looked and I looked at cars and I wanted something different, but I wanted something period correct. Mm -hmm. So I found actually through a Mustang dealer in BC, in yeah. Kelowna. And he had this brand of rev wheels, which are similar to um, torque thrust. Very yeah. similar, a little different. And I thought they they looked nice, so I got us a good deal on those. But I'd really always had a set on period correct tires, like Mickey Thompson, BF Goodrich. Yeah. I was what I was trying to find is Firestone tires. Okay. But because they don't make that radial tire, so I went with these. And a lot of guys say, "Oh, why do you get such a big chunky tire for them?" But I wanted it period correct. Period correct. correct. Fifteen Absolutely. inch, you know, as wide as I could on the back. Yeah. I did tuck a fifty series under there. Okay. Yeah. And really? with room to spare, wow. so which was nice because I didn't want a skinny tire back there. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it originally came with street slicks. Okay. Which looked really bad, but they don't last very long. No, exactly. And especially when you're turning corners all the time. That's right. right. 
No, I think it's perfect, it, and proportion-wise, uh, everything is done yeah, correctly. Yeah, and I wanted the stance right, the stagger right, the, the wheel space and everything, and it, it takes a lot of thought to figure that out. You know, you just don't slap a set of wheels on it, and I'm sure you've seen some vehicles where people have you know, maybe not had the right advice, but they've put the wrong type of wheels yes. or tires on there, you know, too small a tire, yeah. too big a rim, or so on and so forth. And it ruins it. And it ruins the look. Absolutely. You could have a beautiful car, but you're sitting up square, or exactly. you know, you got the do whatever look, right? That's right. Front This is actually a 522 Chrysler Wedge. It's a crate motor I actually ordered out of the States. Cool. Uh, it came complete from the oil pan to the spark plugs right up to the intake. Really? Um, basically, I just had to put it in, put the accessories on it, and get it running. Wow. And I had it tuned and everything. Really? And you did it all yourself? Uh, putting it in. The yeah. tuning I had, I took it to shop because I wanted yeah. it set right. Uh -huh. um, I had a break-in period with the engine, but it actually came with two years warranty. Which really? Is no way. New, yeah, yeah. It, wow. The uh, full dyno sheet, full report, all the dyno specs, all the internals. It's, it's top brand internals. Um, I did try to shop around locally in Red Deer, mm -hmm. but since there's not a, shop, a lot of shops that do that, yeah. the price was astronomical. It mm -hmm. was it was high, high in the high 17,000s to do a 500 stroker, and I actually got the engine delivered to Red Deer with the warranty around the ten thousand dollar mark. Really? You know, wow. even with the exchange. That's awesome. So I, I mean, it has aluminum heads, forged crank, Keith Black pistons. Really? Uh, so on. I can't remember all the details. They gave me the full report and yeah. the dyno report. Yeah. Um, and everything like that. They were great to deal with. Yeah. I mean, awesome. I, I really did want to support locally. I just didn't get a lot of you positive just feedback. Well, maybe in Red Deer, if you're, it was a diesel truck, you would have had a lot of support. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's more shops around there for diesel yeah, trucks. That's yeah. Right. You know, it's unfortunate, but I, yeah. it's a huge car culture there, but yeah. not a lot of. Um, Speed shops, or yeah, anything like exactly. That, eh? Like speed yeah. shops and places you can just walk in and buy stuff off the counter, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and times have changed with the economy. Not like I stock stuff, so it's yeah. always ordering stuff. That's right? right, and you're waiting and you waiting. know, and like any typical guy, you want to touch and feel those parts. You know, instead of waiting for it to show that's up, that's right. You know? Exactly. It's, it's like you want to go to the store. You got your mindset. You're going to buy right. it, right? That's so exactly right. That's what's well, good. and that's what's so cool about like the older muscle cars is you can do the work yourself, right? Yeah. If you're uh, somewhat yeah. of a mechanic. Yep. The problem is with the new ones; it, they're pretty tough to do, and um, you're messing with warranties and stuff yep. like that at all you're times. Right. So that's yep. one thing I greatly like about the older ones better. You know, well, that and the looks and the feel and everything about the old ones is superior. In it my is, mind. And, and it's you know. So it's still got the manual steering, the manual brakes. So wow. you have to have some forethought on how you're driving and where you're going. Yeah, uh, I have upgraded the front brakes and plan is to upgrade the rears. Yeah, so that made a huge difference. Before with the front drums, you had to do a lot of pedal dancing yeah. to get it to stop in a hurry. Wow, you're right. So it. it it's a big difference now that it has front disc brakes. And what what what, what brakes are they? These are Will Woods. Will Woods, nice. Yeah, and it comes as a complete kit. It is a fantastic kit. Um, everything bolted on, yeah. the directions were totally precise, I had no issues, everything went on, um, it went together and I was driving the same day. Really? Yeah, wow. it took me about four hours to do it, wow. six hours. 
Well, that's probably yeah. part of the, some of the satisfaction of owning a car like this. You got it, it was a clean, straight car, but needed a lot of work. Yeah. And you've been doing that over time now, and it must be a very satisfactory feeling when you get it to a state like it is now. It is. What, what I find, though, to 10, even though you've done the work, you've got the good parts, you always tend to worry a little bit. Yeah. You know, yeah. you're driving like you don't want to break something again. But, yeah. You know, it, it can take a lot more than what I give it. Yeah. But I'm just that type. I'm more sensitive to breaking stuff and, you know, going back in and fixing the same thing. But... You know, some guys, oh, you can push a little harder than yeah, that. Like, yeah, yeah. I do. I play some days. Right? Yeah, yeah. But as you get older, I think you get a little wiser, well, too. Well, that, too. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, and, and yeah. the embarrassment if you get stopped by a cop, the car stands out. Oh, yeah. Right? You yeah. know, the cliche is, oh, there's some old guy trying to be young again. Yeah. Driving a hot rod. Yeah, right? that's right. There's no subtlety you know? in a yeah, car Yeah, and like everybody this. with a cell phone camera now, so yeah. you, you'd be famous in the wrong way. That's right. Yeah, exactly. But I, we do I'll go out and have fun. Um, there's a few marks we've left in red. You're here nice. Yeah, some racing stripes. On yeah, the road. yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, nice. So, no plans to race this car. No, I had no. no intentions to race it. I want to have it the race car look. It's it's a tribute to the nostalgic super soccer's yeah. of the mid '70s to you know early, or late '60s, early '70s. Nice. Um, where they brought basically out the wedge cars or the Hemi cars. You know, no bars hold. They just went out and raced with a seatbelt and helmet. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, crazy. Right. Yeah. They they were. I mean <laughs> these off-the-shelf cars that were totally underrated for horsepower yes, yeah. on skinny bias ply tires. I know. I you know, know no track prep, no nothing. Yeah. And they were tearing down the track and, yeah. you know. Those guys were crazy, yeah. man. Like, I yeah. couldn't imagine no, that, how no. scary that would be, right? Not at all. No, no. safety features whatsoever. Nope. a helmet you know? and a lap belt. That's it, yeah, yeah exactly. Nothing else. But, you know, they kept it on the road pretty good. Yeah, oh, yeah, it was they very, were talented. Very rare. Yeah. And what's the transmission in this car? It's a fully race prep 727, so it's a reverse manual. Okay. Um, so basically you have to manual everything reverse all gear shifting is manual up and down yeah really uh, wow. i wanted to leave it like that and some you know purists said no you should go back to a normal shifting pattern well that's yeah. boring because then you have to have transmission linkage then yeah. if you want to punch it you got to kick down the transmission this way if you want to punch it you pull it down a gear and you, you just go cool yeah and it's very responsive it, it's it's a solid clunk to the rear yeah because the pressure is always on so that's with a race transmission mm -hmm. the full transmission pressure is always going so you notice when we were driving when you pull it in gear you can hear it hit okay. the rear end yeah because it's full pressure all the time really yeah huh. even if you take your foot off that transmission is at full pressure all so all it times. always keeps the torque converter locked Really? Yeah. So at any time you want to punch that car, yeah. you're not waiting for the torque converter to, to catch up. Oh, cool. Yeah, so. Well, I'm really looking forward to seeing how this uh, transmission works. <laughs> I think it's time we take this out for a ride. Well, this is my first ride in a dragster car. Oh, very cool. Thanks so much for uh, bringing oh, it out to us. No problem. I was really so, excited about coming down. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So tell me why um, why this car? Why Belvedere? Was it just something you always wanted or was it more you found it and liked it? It was just I found it and liked it. And matter of fact, when I saw the ad, I didn't even know what a Belvedere was. Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. I just loved the, the pro street look of it. Yeah. And uh, I think I had my mind set up already to buy it before I even looked at it. Before I even looked at it, that was it. You know, just what he had written in the ad. I liked what it was. And, of course, you know, trying to convince the wife this was yeah. a good idea, right? It's you need a what? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally. But um, it was interesting because, I mean, as I got to know the model of the car, yeah, how much about it, and and ease of working on the car. Well, it drives very nice. Yeah, it's like, beautiful. It, it's like, like I'm surprised, to be honest with you. I didn't think it, it feels very tight. Yeah, it is. It handles sure. really good. Like it's, yeah, it's it really does. Into yeah. the corners. Very cool. So your plan, next plan for this car would be to painting or is it uh, body work no body works down the road yeah i'm going to finish road. the interior yeah. uh the rear brakes are is this winter and then i want to get this dash repaired and clutter like unclutter all this yeah uh, move the gauges up in here i'm just mocking up where i'm going to put the gps okay because yeah. right now i have the stereo and hidden in here oh that's kind of cool though. yeah it is kind of cool i am going like to leave that. that there yeah so i've got a remote control for that too here oh, so wow that's awesome because, you know, like, you still want to keep the time period of the car in yeah, my mind, right? Yeah, exactly. I, I don't want to modernize it no. too much where it becomes, you know, you see some guys put a whole aluminum dash in and yeah. you just kind of lose that. I, I yeah, want to leave I the original look of it, but just clean it up. It sounds so good. 
So the long-term plans for this car, this is just a cruiser car for you, not just a cruiser race car. it again or anything no. like that? I don't have the heart or the budget. Yeah. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it was never in the plan. That's kind of the promise I told my wife. Yeah, that's right. You know, right. I, yeah. I don't plan on racing the car. Um, no, this, uh, if I had this car, I would do exactly what you're doing. Yeah. Just cruise all day long in it. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for the next episode of Rev It Up with Earl Garner. Oh, too much. That's what happens if you go to first. <laughs> if you don't lock it out, yeah, you lock it out. Yeah.